praise, praise, praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother David Ibarra. I always enjoy praising and worshiping God with the keyboard. Amen. That's wonderful. We'll get the lights on right now and we'll continue. Praise God. It's a beautiful day to serve God on a Sunday. Amen. Here at Jesus' Love Christian Church, we welcome everyone that uh, is willing to come and learn from the scriptures. Right here, we want to be able to speak God's word and uh, take it with us and practice it away from church. Because uh, the real victory is when you do it away from church. You know, right here, we all behave, we all do the best. But when we're individually separated on our own is when we have to uh, exercise what we listen to. The Bible says in James 1.22, don't be just a hearer of the word only, but be a doer of the word. So it's very important that we do the word. And many times, uh, you know, sometimes the devil don't really do something to us when we're all together, but when we're separate, he wants to see how he can come and lie. Because the devil comes... Uh, to lie to us, to trick us uh, wickedly, to try to see how he can get us away from coming to church, reading the scriptures, speaking the word, being kind to one another, forgiving, accepting one another, and all that, etc., etc. The devil loves to get in the way and make us trip and fall. But you're a winner because you made it to church, and that's wonderful that you put everything aside to come and spend an hour here, uh, which is called the... Uh, uh, happy hour. That's what we call it. The happy hour at Jesus' Love Christian Church in La Puente. We have a happy hour here that you'll remember the rest of the day and the weeks to come because anything we can say about the, the Bible is happy. It's, it's happy hours. Whether there's there's uh, bad stuff that went on at that time, but when we get the truth out of there, it sets us free. It makes us free that we can take this and actually put it to uh, use today in this life. Amen. The Bible comes alive when it goes inside of you. You believe it and then you act on it. That's the Bible. That it's not just, oh well, in those days. No, today. Today the Bible works for us. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and uh, receive our afternoon tithes and offerings as we do in the church. Amen. Uh, if you need an envelope, we have an usher right here coming up. Brother Oscar. And you'll be glad to give you an envelope so you can put your name and what you're giving to the Lord's house. And at the end of the year, we usually uh, try to get a paper and uh, add up everything you've done for the Lord's house during the year. And you'd be uh, very blessed to see your paper at the end of the year. The money that you used to take to the mall, you know, to the hot dog stand, to the beach instead of going to the church, it, it accumulates. And then you, you have a statement on a paper that says, you gave to Jesus' Love Christian Church $20,742. Whoa! I gave all that to the church. Yeah. Some others will be $10,648 with 26 cents. Whoa! I gave that much to the church. Yeah. You'd be surprised at the end. It's a blessing to add everything up. And you see how much you gave to the church. Instead of giving it away to the mall or to the hamburger stand every weekend or something. So uh, rejoice. And every year should get more and more that you're giving. It can't be like last year because you're learning more. And every time you learn more, you increase in wealth too. So more word, more blessings from the Lord. Amen. Praise God. So why don't we go ahead and uh, open up this uh, uh, blessing box here for the church. We'll put that on the side there. And uh, amen. There you go. And we put it up there for you. And uh, just put your name, address, everything you're giving. And uh, then when you're ready, you come up and we'll go ahead and uh, pray for your seed and for your obedience and tithing also. Amen. And always say something with your mouth or what you're believing in your heart. Praise God. We thank you and we praise you, dear God. You're a good God. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless his holy name. Amen. All right. Praise God, my brother. Let's go ahead and let's stand and believe God for uh, the offering, the tithe, and also 
the churches in Pakistan, India, Ecuador churches, we bless them. In Jesus' name, Father, multiply it, multiply it, multiply it. Everything that's put in, it multiply for the good of their lives and for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, we call them blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. Well, we'll give, uh, let me see uh, real quick. Thank you, Lord. Get my glasses here. And uh, just a few announcements real quick. Uh, thank you, Lord. Next Sunday, the 12th, we're going to have a ministry of helps meeting right after the first service. So if you're involved in any part of the ministry at uh, Jesus is Love Christian Church, Jesus is Amor uh, Church, Iglesia, uh, please, after the first service, meet with me here. We're going to be going over the ministry of helps. Praise God. And uh, thank you, Jesus. And also the 24th, we'll be having a parking lot evangelism concert with the Jesus crew, giving away free clothes and free food. So if you'd like to participate in that, we have already somebody that gave some money towards the chairs to rent. And today I just received some more money for uh, an offering to give to the musicians, because we're gonna be uh, receiving offerings for their gas money. Since they're cut, there's eight, eight of them playing music and they're coming from different cities, we wanna be able to bless them somehow. So I thank the congregation as the Lord puts in your heart to bring in offerings to give up and have ready for them amen uh it'll be the perfect amount that they're going to need that night amen and they'll remember us that we met their needs all of us together in the name of jesus hallelujah just remember if you have clothing get clothing ready washed and folded children's babies adults men and women and food bags pastor martinez from uh the uh, uh Iglesia Misionera uh, uh, Vision Mexico, Mexico Vision, uh, is preparing some food to bring for us so we can do food bags. But anything else you want to give away to a family, a single mother, you look in your garage, look in your house, just make sure that it's something that you would want to receive for that 24 uh, August on a Friday night at 7.30. Amen? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God forevermore. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. Well, let's go ahead and um, touch on a few things I want to talk to you about today uh, on this happy hour. Praise God. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about Heaven's account, Heaven's bank account. Uh, do you know that you can open a bank account in Heaven? You and I can have a bank account, open bank account in Heaven, where we can deposit and withdraw. We can deposit and withdraw from heaven's bank account the best bank better than all these banks on earth and we're going to talk a little bit about what that's all about amen so let's look at matthew chapter 6 and the new testament let's go to matthew there's a lot of scriptures i have so i may not finish this maybe we'll continue a second part or, or maybe just give you enough uh, that you'll get what you can today matthew 6 19 praise god uh in 19, it says, don't collect. This is Jesus speaking. Don't collect for yourself treasures. Treasures. Amen. Uh, valuables. Treasures. Valuables. Possessions. Don't collect for yourself those things on earth now. Where the moth and rust destroy. And where thieves break in and steal that stuff. Amen. But collect for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither the moth nor rust destroys and where thieves don't break in and steal. Nobody's going to steal from God's bank account. Okay? Praise God. So Jesus did not say we have to wait until we get to heaven to receive from this account. Amen. Uh, we can go ahead and receive from this account right now. If we put our heart, our trust in Him, that's banking in heaven's account. Amen. So let's go to 1 Timothy 6.19 as we continue to talk about heaven's bank account. 
First Timothy to the right. Thank you, Lord. It's wonderful to be able to speak to you about the things of God. Also to our viewers that are watching through video right now, wherever they may be, uh, as they look into YouTube and wherever this video goes. Because we have a page in YouTube. If you ever want to see our videos or everything we preach here or our guests in English, in Spanish, and bilingual. So we have three different kind of videos. English, Spanish, and bilingual. This one, of course, is English. So you go to Iglesia Jesus Es Amor USA Mother Church. That's the name of the page. Iglesia Jesus Es Amor USA Mother Church. I put USA because we're from the USA. There's others that call themselves Iglesia Jesus Es Amor, but they don't put USA. So we're different than saying we're USA Mother Church. We're Mother Church because we have some children we have one in Pakistan, one in India, and we have a couple in Ecuador. And there's one waiting for us in Dominican Republic, but it's gonna take some finances to help them get a building. So we're always just praying and waiting uh, as the Lord leads us, amen? We wanna be able to help everyone we can for not being a 10,000 member at this time, because it's coming, the membership is climbing, it's moving with leaps and bounds. We're gonna have to probably get another uh, uh, service here because uh, you know we don't fit you know the lines are getting longer we don't want the community to complain about you guys waiting in line around the block so we got to do the best we can to give you this and possibly move you out quickly and bring the other service in so we're growing amen don't be moved by what you see or feel right now just be moved by what the word says and what your pastor speaks so you gotta speak and receive it and speak to yourself amen that's the way we move together in faith so if we go to 1 Timothy uh, 6.19, praise God. In 1 Timothy 6.19, it says, this is uh, instructions for rich people, amen, to people that are rich. It says, storing up for themselves a good foundation, it says here, for the age to come, so that they may take hold of life that is real. It says in 18, to the rich, do, to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and willing to share. That's how you can stay rich too, monetary wise, uh, prosperous wise, material wise, is by you uh, doing good works, by being generous to others, and be willing to share. But if you live a life that is me, myself, just us, no more, you ain't gonna go nowhere, but just you, yourself, and your, and that's it. And you're stuck there, you're not moving. So make sure that you're very liberal when you have something in giving to others. Because if you get tight, that's all you're gonna get. And it may take a while before you fill up again. But to someone that's very liberal in their giving, more keeps coming in. As soon as they step over there, there it is. To the right, there it is. To the front, there it is. Back up, there it is. All of a sudden, somebody calls you up. Hey, oh, David, remember that 300 I owe you two years ago? I don't know what happened, but this morning I woke up saying, I got to find Dave. Now I borrow 300 and I never pay him back. Hey, Dave, there's a 300. Hey, thank you. I receive it. And you know what I mean? Uh, things happen like that when you're a giver. You know what I mean? You never get into a corner and say, oh, me, oh, my, oh, baby, you know? Stage right, stage left, pew, you know, and all that kind of cartoons we grew up with. Some of you are too young, so you wouldn't understand those cartoons. But I grew up, I came in 63, 1963, I came to the United States, and those are car the cartoons that I used to watch. Felix the Cat and all those little sticks, black sticks jumping around. They were the best cartoons, man. <laughs> we had fun just with the music. <laughs> oh, no! That's all we used to hear, but we had so much fun as little kids listening to those cartoons, man. They made our day, those cartoons. They were the best, you know? Nowadays, it's just... <laughs> kill him and cut his head up and all that stuff. But those cartoons were just fun, you know, naive. We, we were kept virgins. We were kept pure. We were just growing up in the world, not knowing about, you know, hate or prejudice or, you know, or you're black, I'm white, you're Chinese, you're Spanish. 
None of that. We're just growing up. Everybody getting along, watching cartoons, you know. But it's, it's about not knowing Jesus too, because later on you get older and then you got to see what? Who do I belong? Where do I belong? Where's my group? Oh, my name is Luis Chacon. I'm a Ecuadorian, Latino, so I better hang out with the Spanish speaking. It's almost like something in us that says, okay, I got to go with this group, you know? But praise God that we're free today in Jesus Christ. And if you're watching my video and you're, you're bound by prejudice and you're bound by color and, and, and language and, and, and your parents hate, that's why you hate it. You know what? Jesus can change your life. Jesus can come into your heart and just, man, turn everything around like he did me. I've been with the Lord now 41 years. 41 years as a born-again Christian. And I love it. I am so proud of God allowing me to stay with Him this long. You know, it's just up to me uh, not to leave Him. You'll never leave me or forsake me, the Bible says. But I'm the one that sometimes may mess up and leave Him. So I better hurry up and come back and say, forgive me. Uh, it's not fun over there without you. So I encourage you to keep God in everything you do in your life. In the dark, He's there. In the light, He's there. When you're alone at home, He's there. When you're at school, He's there. When you visit your friends, He's there. Don't ever think like, okay, nobody's watching. That's foolish. He knows everything. He knew exactly where you were going to be and doing what. So don't try to hide from God. God, especially if you have family that's praying for you. When you have family that's praying for you, that's even, oh no. You'll never be able to get away now with prayer. Because prayer sends angels over there to cover you and protect you, man. And you always wonder, oh, I was so lucky. Nah, no luck about it. Somebody's praying for you. None of this knock on wood or crush your fingers. It's the blessings of the Lord that are making your family rich. So you better join your family. If you're not involved with your family, get your family together and pray together. Watch the power of God move in this family. Thank you, Jesus. So, uh, we're talking about making deposits. We're talking about there's a, there's a bank account in heaven. Heaven's bank account. Like a Bank of America down here, Wells Fargo, there's a bank in heaven. Praise God. So, uh, to the it says 1 Timothy 6.19 that we lay hold of eternal life here in this world. Not in heaven. Eternal life. We're supposed to do and live as long as we can and with the best that we can. But we got to act like God when we're on earth. We got to imitate the Lord. Ephesians 5 1 says, Be imitators of God, especially as dear children in His love. We have to first uh, act in love with one another. We can't be ugly with one another, uh, say nasty words at one another, you know, pick on each other or, or murmur and complain. Let, let's ask for forgiveness and keep going. Don't get stuck in any of that nonsense. Now, uh, we're talking about making deposits. Now, let's look at the forms of depositing. Uh, Deuteronomy 26. That's, uh, you can read that later, the chapter 26. There's uh, Malachi 3, 10 through 14, which we know Malachi 3, 10 to 14 talks about, uh, don't rob me in my tithes. How have we robbed you in not giving me tithes, the Bible says. So don't let God call you a thief. A I don't have to call nobody nothing. I just have to make sure I tithe. I give what comes into my hands. I give 10% to the Lord. You know what I mean? Whether it's my time, my life, something. I got to give something back to God. In appreciation, I am grateful to God that He says He puts a guard in front of, of my stuff so that the devourer, the thief, the, 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 you know, the, the devil Pac-Man? Have you ever seen the Pac-Man years back? A little game? Wah, 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 that ate everything up? I call that the devil Pac-Man. The devil Pac-Man wants to devour everything you have saved. Everything you put away under the bed, way in the back. The devil uh, uh, Pac-Man wants to come and take that out of there. Everything you stuck underground, under the stairs in the backyard. You know, I won't put it in the bank so nobody knows. That if you're not a tither, the devil will find a way to get everything you have hiding. He'll take everything that you think, I'm going to be rich. No, you won't. When you steal from God, there's a posse after you. There's a posse after you. They're after you. You know, you know, your face is on a wanted for stealing from God's tree. You don't want that to happen to you. So whatever you do, you say, Lord, I may not have the money, but until I get the money, let me tie this. 
So you better find something to tithe in your life. So you might as well give your life as a tithe. Okay? Meaning, oh, oh, I come to church. No, that's what you're supposed to do as a child of God. Come to church. You tithe separately. You give 10% of something. And I always tell this to people. One Sunday, let's say two hours and a half in church. You got 10.30 to 12.30. That's two hours, right? And then to one, that's two hours and a half. So four Sundays at two and a half hours each, what does that mean? 10 hours. So if you have no money, use your life as a tithe in every four Sundays until you get some money. Lord, I'm going to be here from 10.30 to 1 at Jesus' love. Well, well, that's the morning service in Spanish. But at least 2.30 or, or figure it out somewhere where you can put in 10 hours to the Lord during that month or something like that. And say, Lord, I believe in your tithe. I may not have the money, but I'm here with my life. Pastor Luis, where's the vacuum cleaner? Pastor Luis, where's the, uh, uh, the rag to wipe the windows out in front of the church? Pastor Luis, where's the hose and salt to wash the bus in the back? Pastor Luis, you have another rack so I can clean the drums and the dust in there? Yeah, we're ready for you. So when you're ready to tithe without money, come and see us. And you can go ahead and begin tithing in the temple. That's one way to let God know that, hey, I'm not stealing, I'm doing my best. But when money comes, I'm going to go ahead and give my 10%. You know what I mean? It says that if you don't give your 10%, you know what it says in Leviticus? He charges 5% extra. That means when you, you when you catch up, you gotta give 15%, not 10. So see, it's gonna be hard if you keep doing that. Because then you're ooh, you owe so much. You better just give your whole life and be involved in church all the time till you catch up. Do whatever it takes. But you know what? We serve a God that's merciful. And he'll talk with you and say, you know what? I erase all that. Start fresh. Start fresh. Just do my word. Show me that you can do my word. If you can't give 10%, show me you can give 6%, 5 and you're working in the next 5 See? And why am I talking about that? Because a form of depositing in banks, in the bank of heaven, is tithing. That's depositing in the bank of heaven. What's another way of depositing in the bank of heaven? Giving to the poor. Give to the poor. You lend to the Lord. You're depositing in the bank of heaven. All that is noticed. It's okay. Stand next. You got it. Get to the poor. Got you on that one. Get tight. Got you. Now, and that one you can find in Proverbs 19 17. Proverbs 19 17. About giving to the poor. So when you give to the poor, you lend to the Lord. You know, when people are standing by the freeways or outside 7-Eleven and they're going, hey man, you got a quarter? I can borrow, you know? And if you have one, go ahead and give it to them. Hey, in Jesus' name, man, be blessed. If you don't have a quarter, you know, that's like when you go to the gas station, they're right there too. You can, you can spot them. You know, they're around somewhere. Some, one of them got a little rag and a little bottle of water. And sometimes they're bold. They don't even ask. They just go start going, I go, excuse me, excuse me, don't, no, don't do that. It's clean. Don't do it. You know? And I'm waiting to see what their reaction is. And I'm willing to, if I don't have no, no change, I, I'm using a car, you know? But if I have a quarter or something here, God bless you, man. You know? I'm lending to the Lord. I'm depositing in the bank of heaven when I do things like that. God will return all that to me. I lend to the Lord. He repays. Another form of depositing, making investments into the gospel. Hello? You're investing in the gospel of the kingdom of God. You're investing through through the church. Jesus Amor, Jesus is love. You're investing in this gospel that goes out of this place. Amen. Praise God. Mark 10. Look at Mark 10, New Testament. Mark 10. Praise the Lord. In Mark 10, and we're looking at uh, let's see, 29. Mark 10, 29 and 30. Praise the Lord. 29 and 30, it says here, I assure you, Jesus said, there is no one who has left house, brothers and sisters, mother or father, children 
or fields because of me and the gospel who will not receive a hundred times more now at this time a hundred times more houses a hundred times more brothers and sisters a hundred times more mother and children and fields with persecutions with persecutions oh I don't like that word persecution persecution that means ouch pushed around talked on criticized persecution mm, the rent's not ready no gas in the car persecution I don't like persecution well welcome to earth that's what's happening on earth with persecutions you'll get a hundred times more blessings but there's persecutions involved in there and eternal life in the age to come with persecutions but you get eternal life ahead of that in the age to come you have persecutions here but you know where you're headed this is just for a short time persecution ouchies and all that kind of stuff just get back in the scripture just get, get back in prayer get back in giving keep depositing in the bank account of heaven persecution will be just little things it won't be a lot it'll be something you look at and it may be ouch for the moment but you you bypass it and move on to the next thing. Don't get stuck in one thing and cry about it. Because if the devil sees you crying about that one thing, he's gonna keep you focused on that one thing, and you, and you ain't gonna able to. You can't. You ain't gonna be able to see the victory on the one over there and the one you just passed. He's gonna focus you on the problem right now. And when you focus on that problem, you're stuck. You can't get out. So the best thing to do is to get, get in there and praise and worship. Even if you have to cry, praise God. Thank you, Lord. You're so wonderful. I praise you. Why are you crying? Oh, because I love him. Just, you know, praise him and worship him. And what you're actually uh, hurting about is what's going on at the moment. There's pain. But you got to turn that around and say, I'm praising and worshiping my God through pain and in pain. And I don't know how things happen, but when you do that, it's called faith. And God honors faith. So when you go through steps of faith, the rest you, you're going to hear over there somewhere. Wait, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You hear that? I don't know. What's over there? You hear that? I don't know. It's only three of us left. Yeah. I don't know if we're going to make it. We're going to make it. Just trust in God. Maybe the last two and three in that hole at Custer's last stand. The Indians are surrounding you. And you think this is it. Goodbye. Goodbye, my friend. Goodbye, my friend. Goodbye. Goodbye, my friend. No, no, goodbye. The Lord's got another plan. You think this is it? In your natural mind, you're saying, there's no way out of here. But evidently, you didn't see the movie. Uh, what is that movie? A long time ago. Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark yeah. right remember that guy he's in that wall and it's coming close to him from all four corners and there's even swords that's going to hit him and he's like, oh, he comes out of it so sometimes there's some movies you have to remember about how they got out of those things that sometimes our life seems like we're caught up we ain't getting out of this one no money how are we going to do this one the army has arrived so you better expect the army all the time expect it you don't know where it's going to come from where there is an army because you bank in heaven's account you're a depositor in heaven's account and as long as you put what I've been reading to you you're tithing, you're giving to the poor, making investments into the gospel. The sister that gave me some money for chairs the other night, it was an investment in the gospel. The other person that gave me money today for the speaker, for the for the singers, is an investment in the gospel. People are practicing banking in heaven. Anything you do like that. Here, Pastor, this is for the bus to fix. A sister said, here's $400, go get the registration done. They invested in the gospel because the bus were trying to fix for the church. You know what I mean? Here, pastor, here's $200. You know, 
get that air conditioning down in the back. Okay? So we invest in someone and blessing him. You know, you guys got to get to the point where the giving is part of banking in a great bank. Yeah, maybe you don't trust Bank of America or Wells Fargo, but you got to trust the bank account you have in heaven. That's a yes and amen kind of bank. That will always produce and will give you, you can always withdraw because you gave, you planted in that bank. You can always withdraw from that bank account from heaven. Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So we were reading, uh, there's no one who has left house, brothers or sisters, mother or father, children or fields because of me and the gospel, who will not receive a hundred times more now at this time. Houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields, remember, with persecution, you know, but he hasn't abandoned us, he's with us till the end of the age, so you're not alone in the persecutions. Just because you read persecution, oh no, they're going to hurt me, they're going to slap me, push me around, no. He is with us. He'll never leave us or forsake us. So we're going to go through the water, through through the through the uh, 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 oven, like the Hebrew children. Through the water, we will not drown. In the fire, we will not burn. In Daniel thrown in the den of lions, they didn't eat him because he was always in prayer. So we need to remember to do the word so that way we don't fall into all this worldly stuff and we get out of there real good. And we just say, God did it again. You know, God did it again. And if he did it that time, he's going to do it again. And again, and again, and again. Because that's the kind of God that we have. And sometimes we might have to go right to the... Dun, 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 stop. Sometimes it's a test. What's coming out of our mouth? What are we doing in church? And what are we doing at home? Are we crying and complaining at home? And we're just saying, praise the Lord, church. You better act the same way under pressure wherever you go. How about you, pastor? How do you do it? Well, sometimes I stay quiet. I pray and everything, but then I just stay quiet and meditate. But if I find that meditating is not good for me, then I get back into making some noise. So it's okay to stay quiet. But don't just stay quiet and nervous and you're biting your nails and, and you're scared and you're you're doing this with your foot and you know that's not that's not relaxing in the Lord you're not relaxing in the Lord when you're doing all this relaxing the Lord is relaxing in his word in his promises of yes and amen that's what the Lord says so we'll leave it alone but how are you going to do it I already talked to him I told him this this is due I'm going to work that's what I know how to do I'm asking him to provide the rest is up to him I'm doing my part don't be asking God to help you. You stay home and just, you know, eat Twinkies, Pepsi, and watch TV all day and expect Him to come and rescue you or come knock on your door and say, I have a job for you. Are you ready to work? Oh, maybe tomorrow I want to finish this program. No, 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 no. You ain't going nowhere acting that way. So make sure that you're banking in heaven's account, you know? Uh, <clears throat> and eternal life in the age to come. Praise God. Another form of depositing in the heaven's bank account is giving as a praise to God. Sometimes in secret. Look at Psalms 118. Let's go to the Old Testament. Psalms 118. What about this secret stuff? What are you talking about? Psalms 118. Let's see here secret thanksgiving for victory says Psalms 118 give thanks to the Lord for he is good his faithful love endures forever this is a reminder to yourself why are you doing what you're doing is because this is what's going on all the time this is a thanksgiving for victory you want victory give him thanks even if you don't see it if it's not paid yet if you're not wearing it yet, if it hasn't arrived, you by faith act like it's, it's the victory is mine. Let Israel say, his faithful love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his faithful love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, 
His faithful love endures forever. I called to the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and put me in a spacious place. The Lord is for me. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Can you picture that? You're going through problems and you start reading that in your room, walking around. I'm telling you, it'll only be a few more scriptures before you start going, Woo! Yes, sir! That's me! Glory to God! Yes, Father! Thank you for speaking to me! That's the answers. The Bible has your answers. You just have to read it and believe it. Amen? Let's look at another one. Verse 7, Psalm 18. With the Lord for me as my helper, I will look in triumph on those who hate me. Mom, Dad, yes, they hate me. Well, it says here, the Lord's your helper. So you look in triumph on those who hate you. You know, the answer is right here. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in alcohol. See, it doesn't work. Than to trust in men. No. It is better to take refuge in uh, smoking weed daily than to trust in men. No, that's not what the Lord said. That's not, that's not how it works. He's got the answer. It is better to take refuge in the Lord. Come hide with me. Don't trust in men. Trust me more. And I'll show you who you can trust in. Nine. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in no nobles. Nobles, All the nations surround me in the name of the Lord. I destroyed them. They surrounded me. Yes, they surrounded me in the name of the Lord. I destroyed them. They surrounded me like bees. They were extinguished like a fire among thorns. In the name of the Lord, I destroyed them. He's giving you hope. What happens when you're surrounded with trouble, where persecution comes? When attacks come, you know, where gossip, murmuring, complaining against you, or somebody don't like you, or haters that want you destroyed, or want you not to be popular or something. You need to go to the Lord. Lord, what do I do? Read the word. Start in Psalm 118. You know, you push me hard to make me fall, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Salvation is a way of being complete. When you're saved, you're a complete person. There are shouts of joy and victory in the tents of the righteous. In the houses of the righteous, there's shouts of joy and victory. So what do you need to do? Woo! I win! Glory to God! Haters don't have nothing on me. Woo! Jesus is Lord. God is on my side. Who can be against me? You know, there's victory, there's songs of joy in the houses. Hallelujah. For the righteous. You've been made righteous by the blood of Jesus. You're called the righteous. Praise God. 15. There are shouts of joy and victory in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand strikes with power. Pow! That's my child. Leave him alone. Get away from him. That's mine. Leave her alone. It's my family. The Lord takes care of his. Huh? The Lord takes care of it with power. He strikes with power. The Lord's right hand is raised. The Lord's right hand strikes with power. I will not die, but I will live and proclaim what the Lord has done. I'm going to kill you. I'm, I'm dreaming about me being killed. Shut up and don't say that. Go to Psalm 118, 17 and say, I will not die. I will live and proclaim what the Lord has done for me. You better find some scripture to win. That's how you deposit in heaven's account. Do things for God down here and you're depositing. And that day comes when you withdraw. You got so much in that account with God. You know, and so on. It keeps going all the way down to the 29. 29 says, Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His faithful love endures forever. My God has left me. No, He hasn't. His faithful love endures forever. Where is He when I need Him? His faithful love endures forever. God is bad. No, He is a good God, it says here. 
He's never bad. He's good. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So that's forms of depositing, tithing, giving to the poor, making investments into the gospel, giving us a praise to God, sometimes in secret. Just you and the Lord talking to him. Like I was reading Psalm 118. Remember Psalm 118. Practice in your house by yourself. Remember, don't do this in front of people. Especially people that are not in the spirit, they won't understand you. You know what I mean? They'll start going, <laughs> you're crazy. You know? Because they don't understand. They think you're weird. You know? My Lord is good. He is faithful forever. What are you talking about? They're not in the spirit, so don't talk in front of them like that. But one day it might just come out, so let it out when it's time to come out. Just don't go show up. Let the Holy Spirit move in you. That's the best time. So making withdrawals is receiving from your tithing. You see? In Malachi 3.10, let's read quickly, right before Matthews, is Malachi. Malachi. Here it is. Malachi. Thank you, Lord. Okay, Malachi 3.10, it says, bring the full 10% into the storehouse, the warehouse, the house of the temple, so that there may be food in my house. Amen? Test me in this way. This is the only time that you're going to see the word test me, okay? You won't see this word again, test me. This is the time he uses when it's time for you to use money. It's the only time he says, don't be scared. Test me. Test me. Yeah, but I work so hard. Test me. Trust me. Confide in me. But man, I spent 60 hours this week making it. Test me, he says. In this way, says the Lord of hosts, see if I will not open the floodgates of heaven. The windows, floodgates, windows of heaven. And pour out a blessing for you without measure. Pour out a blessing for you without measure. So the windows of heaven will be opened unto you. That's making withdrawals, receiving from tithing. The word windows is the same word translated windows in Genesis 7, 11, where it says when the earth was flooded. Look at Genesis 7, 11. Genesis. We're doing good with time. We're almost done here. And we'll let you go in this happy hour. Uh, Genesis. And we're looking at 7-Eleven. Not 7-Eleven, the store, but 7-Eleven, Genesis, the Old Testament. Amen? Genesis 7, chapter 7, verse 11. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the seventh day of the month, on that day, all the sources of the watery death burst open. The floodgates, the windows of the sky were open. So they're talking about the same thing right there. The word windows is the same word translated windows in Genesis 7 11, when the earth was flooded. So he can pour out water, he can pour out ideas. You can pour out new co concepts, uh, fresh things for you to think about, you know. Uh, you can pour out flying bills. Uh, I don't doubt it. All of a sudden you're walking somewhere and flying bills. Start. I don't doubt nothing about God. Oh, pastor, you're going over now. To, no, I, I don't doubt anything about God. I allow him to do whatever he wants to do. If he wants to rain rain hundred dollar bills let it rain and he may rain just around you in a circle so you can get them all you know what I mean praise God so uh, <clears throat> that's making withdrawals receiving from God Luke 638 look at Luke 638 receiving from God Matthew Mark Luke 638 says hallelujah Luke 6 38 tells us here give give Jesus is saying here to give why do I have to give because Jesus says it and it will be given to you Jesus will never leave you empty handed if you give 
he'll make a way to get somebody to get to you, to give to you. It will be with an idea, it will be maybe with finance, it will be maybe with a job, it will be maybe with, uh, I got this great deal of a car, and maybe I got this great uh, apartment for you, or how, uh, God has a way of getting our attention. All you have to do is your part, give. And then it says, and it will be given to you. It says, a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, with what you measure, if you give a teaspoon, you're going to get a teaspoon back. If you give a truckload, you're going to get a truckload back. It all depends on your faith and how much you want to do. God knows the intention of your heart. Amen. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. That's receiving from your giving. And Ephesians 6, 8. Quickly go over there because we're going to be closing. Ephesians 6, 8. It says here. Knowing that whatever good each one does, slave or free, he will receive this back from the Lord. The Lord is the one that blesses us. Amen? Oh, but I go to work as my boss. No. God uses your boss to bless you. Yeah, but I work for him. Yes. But you first praise and worship and live for God and he'll put you in the right place and he causes and, and he makes our boss say come inside I don't know why I'm doing this but I'm going to give you a raise I just feel like you need a raise how much are you making now uh, 12 an hour okay it's going to 15 right now thank you I received it